All right, we're gonna do a requested one. We're gonna create a combo system on a lock. Very similar to what you would see in like a Resident Evil game. First thing you wanna go do is go over to filebase.gamedevhq.com. I'm using lock 27 for this, which has the uh, cylinders and all the letters on it. Then what we wanna also do is drop that object into a parent object, and we're gonna need three different objects. One, we're gonna have the interactive one, which starts the puzzle. Then we're gonna actually add the, the puzzle lock, and then we're gonna finally also have a virtual camera that's gonna be the camera that zooms in. The interactive is going to be the one that's enabled, but the puzzle and the virtual camera are going to be disabled at this point in time. And when we do interact with the camera, that's when we're going to push on in. So in our script cylinder lock puzzle, we need to go ahead and get all three of these game objects. Then we're also going to create a header and we're going to create a string, which is going to be our puzzle code. And we're going to create a unity event, which is going to run at the end of solving the puzzle. Then we're going to connect the objects in the inspector. And finally, we're going to go ahead and set this up to be interactable with our system. Then uh, we're going to go ahead and create a start puzzle system. And what the start puzzle system is going to do is we are going to make sure we turn on our virtual camera. And then we're going to make sure we turn off the lock interactive. So when we click on this, now the puzzle lock is apparent, but you notice that our character is moving in the background. So we need to pause the game whenever we do this. But we come into an issue. When we click on it, we pause the game. We don't give time for the animation to occur. So we're gonna have to turn this into a coroutine. So we're gonna set this up at, as a puzzle start. And we're gonna move everything down in here, but we're gonna set up a yield return new wait for seconds. So it gives like half a second for that virtual camera to uh, uh, play. So when we now click on it, we zoom on into the camera, but we run into another issue. We can't zoom out. We gotta end the puzzle as well. So we're basically going to unpause the game and reverse everything else so now the interactive becomes true again the lock puzzle turns off the vcs turn off and uh, then we got to also see how do we do this well when we press the mouse button down on the right mouse button that's when we end the puzzle so if we click it on the left zoom in right button turn off now we want to do a little bit of a check here we want to make sure that the puzzle is going to be started when we do interact with it uh, just to prevent any like issues later on with uh, interacting with other objects so we're always just going to do that bull check first to make sure that our, we are currently in the puzzle and now we can start interacting with these buttons all right now we need to dive into the harder stuff we need to start making the cylinder work so we're going to go ahead and create a serialized field for all three game objects we're going to drop all three cylinders into um, our, our, our uh, serialized fields now we're going to create a rotation step and we're going to create this little function right here which is going to create a step and every step is going to rotate by 45 degrees and so we're going to identify step you know two is going to be uh what 45 times two which is 90. so you know every time we uh, increment we're going to adjust by 45 degrees and now when we do that incrementation we want to create a string that's just going to store a letter and we're going to have these cylinder values and inside these cylinder values we're just going to go around the cylinder and see what letter is on that cylinder so in case one which is zero degrees it's d case uh, i'm sorry case zero is d case one which is 45 is c case two which is 90 is b and so on and so on to create this um, um, a switch statement and then we're going to do a debug statement at the end to tell us what we got and so when we do press the w button you'll notice that the letters correspond with the index and we're getting spit back out the appropriate letters now let's go in reverse let's go ahead and make sure that when we press the s key or we're pressing downwards we're rotating in the other direction via stepwise and then we can go ahead and well 
we need to create the current cylinder. Now the current cylinder is gonna be zero. There's three cylinders total. So if this is the current cylinder of zero, we're going to mess with the cylinder 01 step. And so we're gonna drop those into here. This is how we're gonna start switching between multiple cylinders. So let's say we pressed on the uh, D key or the right key. Well, now we want to move one cylinder over to the right. So we're gonna use our math F min and we're gonna add a plus one with a max of two. And then if we press the S button, we're going to, in our current cylinder, do a math F dot max, and we're gonna subtract one from our current cylinder with a minimum value of zero. So when we go right or when we go left, you can see that the current cylinder changes. And if we aren't on cylinder zero, that first cylinder isn't gonna rotate. So now we need to do the big work. We need to basically duplicate everything and uh, copy it over for cylinder two and cylinder three. So not only do we have to create the cylinder movement for cylinder one and cylinder two, but we also got to create all the stored values for those cylinders to be checked. So now we gotta go through and individually adjust every single letter, and we gotta adjust the debug statements and basically everything so that those stored string values and step values are appropriate. And now you can kind of see that when we go to the cylinder two, we're moving through that, and we're getting the case statement of what letter coincides with what step. And you just gotta make sure you go test everything. Now we're gonna do our check code function. In here, we're gonna create an entered code, which is going to be our cylinder one letter, plus two letter, plus three letter. And we're gonna compare that to our puzzle code. And if it matches, then our puzzle code is complete. But if it doesn't match, if the two strings don't match, then I'm gonna tell you what you entered and also so what the current puzzle code is. And then where do we place this? Well, we're gonna run the check code at the end of every time we check what the new cylinder value is. So it's gonna be a one-time check and you'll start with like just comparing the first letter to the three letters. You know those don't work. So you gotta go to the second cylinder and the third cylinder. And finally, when you get to the all three cylinders and you put in AOC, which is our code, now you'll see at the bottom that the puzzle is complete. Excellent. Now we need to go ahead and create our completed puzzle function. So in here, once we do complete everything, we're gonna run an uh, open lock animation. We're gonna wait a second. Then we're gonna set lock interactive is true. We're gonna end the puzzle and we're gonna run the event. Then we're gonna start our coroutine. We're gonna make sure on start, we don't run the puzzle. And now we're just gonna start adding in sound effects. So when we let step to the left or to the right, or we push up or down, and then when we finish the puzzle, we have the appropriate sounding sound effects. One of the last things we need to do is go ahead into our uh, main ob object and add an animator. And what we want to do is animate the lock 27 puzzle so that when it does open, the lock actually opens up and it moves down a little bit to give it a little bit more flair and prettiness, I guess, behind it. And in our completed puzzle, we want to set the animation trigger to open. Excellent, go ahead and place that lock. And we also have this event system so that when we do solve this puzzle, we can now run an event. And for this, it's opening and unlocking this door. New to coding? Feel like those tutorials are speaking an alien language? Yeah, we've been there. That's why we built Game Dev HQ, a place where you can actually learn by building. Our monthly membership gives you access to 900 plus hours of hands-on training from 2D to 3D to VR, AR, first-person, and third-person games. 
Plus, you'll get our 12,000 game asset library, daily check-ins, one-on-one tech support, and live workshops six days a week where we'll cover the stuff that you want to learn. We're not just developers, we're gamers too, and we love helping people like you turn that first line of code into something awesome. Come hang out with us and let's build something together. Check us out at GameDevHQ.com.